Nazis and Supernatural Powers, from World War II Diaries. The Nazis had a secret weapon, that they thought was going to help them win World War II. The weapon was, magic powers. Believe it or not, this is true. You've probably already heard some overblown stories, about the Nazis dabbling in the occult, and making secret zombie demon armies, but it isn't all just make-believe myths. The Nazis really did have a program to use psychic powers and astrology to influence the war, and they really thought that they were going to win it with magic. In January 1933, just before Adolf Hitler became Chancellor of Germany, he visited a clairvoyant named Eric Jan Hunnison and asked him to tell him his future. Hunnison had caught Hitler's attention a year earlier when he published an article prophesizing that Hitler would become Chancellor of Germany in 1933. If Hunnison is to be believed, Hitler visited him dozens of other times off the record. During their session, Hunnison told Hitler that there would be a favorable rise in his future, but a hindrance stood in their way. Hunnison promised Hitler he would use a magical spell to ensure Hitler's success. Hitler had no idea that the man was Jewish. Maybe Hunnison couldn't tell the future after all. Nearly as soon as World War I ended, Adolf Hitler made friends with a doctor named Wilhelm Gutberlet. By day, Gutberlet was an ordinary, mild-mannered physician. But by night, he used his secret, mystical powers to detect Jews. Gutberlet was a huge part of the early Nazi movement. He was one of Hitler's first followers and, before Joseph Goebbels took over, was the man behind the Nazi parties propaganda machine. He and Hitler bonded early on over their mutual anti-Semitism. A few days before an assassin tried to kill Hitler, at the Munich Beer Hall, a Swiss astrologer Karl Ernst Kraft tried to warn Hitler that his life was in danger and Hitler should cancel every public appearance. Himmler took it seriously as the prediction became reality, and the Nazi party hired Kraft. Kraft probably didn't do that much for the Nazis. There's proof that Goebbels hired him to go over Nostradamus's predictions, and find a way to present them to make it sound like Hitler was destined to win the war but most of the things Kraft had claimed probably weren't true. Kraft made up enough stories about how important he was to the Nazis, though, that the British heard about it and hired an astrologer of their own to counter him. And pretty soon, the two most powerful armies in the world were in a minor fortune-telling arms race. Dietrich Eckhart was no minor part of Hitler's life. Hitler called him his mentor, built monuments in his honor, and even dedicated Mein Kampf to him. And all that just might have been because, Eckhart told Hitler that he was the Messiah. Eckhart, like many of the Nazis, was a member of the Thule Society, a German group obsessed with the occult. He believed that Germany was destined to give birth to an Aryan Messiah, who would lead them to the German promised land, and he believed that Messiah was Hitler. The Nazi party was pretty sure 
that they knew how the universe began. Two stars, they believed, crashed into each other thousands of years ago, and flung massive blocks of ice around the universe. They called it the World Ice Theory, and its founder had the best possible science behind it, that it had come to him in a dream. Hans Horbiger developed his theory, after noticing that the moon was made out of ice, which is a bad start for any scientific theory. He said that he then went to bed, and had a dream about the dawn of the universe. General Heinrich Himmler sent archaeologists off, to every corner of the globe in search of proof, that the world had started off as a gigantic block of ice, while Hitler set up a whole planetarium, dedicated to teaching people the world ice theory, the creation story that came to a man in a vision. There was a secret office in Berlin, with the letters SP on the door. The letters stood for Side Real Pendulum, and inside, Nazi psychics were using magical pendulums to find warships. The Nazis started the project, because they were convinced that the British already had a team of psychics spying on them. A Nazi report said that reliable sources had confirmed, that the British had established an institute where, by help of using pendulums, the positions of German warships, and most of all U-boats were investigated. In reality, the British had just cracked Enigma machine, and were listening all the coded messages, but the Nazis didn't know that. They bought into the psychic theory, and tried to build a team of their own. According to Wilhelm Wolff, Heinrich Himmler's personal astrologer, Himmler didn't just hire people with supernatural powers, he thought he could tell the future himself. Himmler told Wolff that he never made a decision, without first consulting the positions of the stars and the moons. Every major command he had given the Nazi army, he said, was based on upon certain, little-known moon constellations. Ironically, Himmler ended up banning astrology across Germany, but if Wolf is to be believed, he didn't ban it because it was nonsense. He banned astrology, because he was afraid it was too powerful. SS Brigade Führer, Karl Weiligut, had some weird ideas. German culture, he believed, had started in 228,000 BC, back when there were three suns in the sky, and giants and dwarfs roamed the earth. And Jesus was German, he insisted, and his real name was Christ. Weiligut had a whole god complex, worked into his weird spiritual beliefs. He told people that he was the descendant of an ancient German God King, which most people thought was pretty much completely insane. Heinrich Himmler, though, got aboard with it. Reportedly, Weiligut helped convince Himmler that he was the reincarnation of a medieval king named Henry the Fowler. It's hard to say for sure how many of Weiligut's ideas Himmler subscribed to. On May 10, 1941, Deputy Führer Rudolf Hess left Nazi Germany and flew to Scotland on a mission to make peace with the Duke of Hamilton and the British government. An astrologer and Hess's friend, Karl Haushofer, had told him that he had a dream in which he had seen Hess walking through English castles, bringing peace between Britain and Germany. Hess spoke to his astrologer, who told him that six planets would be in Taurus and that the moon would be full on May 10, which would be an auspicious day, to make a journey of peace. 
and so he flew to Scotland, convinced it was his destiny. It didn't exactly work out. Hess was captured in Scotland by the Home Guard, and spent the rest of the war in jail. And Hitler, blaming what had happened on the psychics, banned astrologers, faith, healers, and occultists across the nation. Even after Hitler banned supernatural wonder workers, Heinrich Himmler went on hiring them. He was pretty sure they really worked. He hired them back when Mussolini was caught. Hitler had ordered his intelligence team to track Mussolini down, and they didn't have any idea where to find him and so Himmler, in a panic, called up the occultists he had thrown into prison and promised them their freedom if they found Mussolini. One of the psychics declared that he'd found Mussolini on an island west of Naples, by swinging a pendulum over a map. Nobody actually listened to him, the Germans ended up finding Mussolini by intercepting radio messages, but when they finally freed Mussolini, it didn't escape Himmler's notice that, one of his psychics had gotten the location right. Secretly. Himmler kept psychics on the Nazi payroll, convinced that his secret team of psychics would win him the war. Thanks for watching friends, and see you in the next video.